Hello, my name is Lewis and welcome to Gathering the Magic. Today we're looking at the $40 budget deck tech that myself and me Master Steve have created for Dina Soul Steeper. Dina is a 1-3 Dryad Druid that costs a black and a green that has whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life, with the added ability to pay one generic and sack a creature that gives Dina plus X plus zero, where X is the sacked creature's power. In this deck, we're going to be really taking advantage of that gain life, opponent loses life strategy. First off, we have the ramp. Starting with those rampy creatures, Burnished Heart is an artifact creature that you can sacrifice and put two lands onto the battlefield tapped, and Elvish Mystic is that standard one drop green rampy creature. We also have two more of those in the shape of Finehorn Elves and Lanawar Elves. Next up, we have Commander Staple Cultivate, a new from Strixhaven, Environmental Sciences. This sorcery allows you to search out a basic land and gain two life, which as you'll see for Dina is absolutely key. Some more green commander staples here with Kadama's Reach and Farseek to fetch you out more lands and also we'll whack in a Dark Ritual and Harrow for that early ramp if needed. And we have a Rampant Growth to Rampant Grow that mana and Fertile Ground that will allow you to tap a banner and get an extra mana. And to finish off the rampy section, we've got Old Faithful Soul Ring. You love to see it. And very quickly, if you've not already, then smash that subscribe button. It's free to do. You can always unsubscribe later. And for some reason, I've agreed that if we hit a thousand subscribers before August, I'll get myself a prickly marmoset tattoo. Oh God. Next up, we're looking at all those life gain creatures. And in this deck, there is a butt ton of them. You really want this deck to be gaining life at every possibility to maximize that Dina trigger and drain your opponents until they're blue in the face. First up, we have Ayara, Thirst of Lockthwain and Cauldron Familiar. Ayara has a trigger that whenever her or any black creature hits your side of the board, you gain life and your opponent loses a life, and Cauldron Familiar also has an ETB trigger of making your opponent lose a life and you gain a life. It's also got a sack food trigger that you bet we'll really be focusing on later on in this deck, because you bet I'm hungry. Next we have Death Greeter and Diamond Mare. Death Greeter says whenever another creature is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you gain one life, and Diamond Mare is a good boy that gives you one life whenever you cast a spell of your chosen colour. We also have Dread Presence that essentially has a landfall swamp trigger that you can draw a card and lose a life or gain some life. And Essence Warden gives you that life every time a creature hits your side of the field. We have Falcon Wrath Noble, a 2-2 flyer that says whenever another creature dies, target player loses a life and you gain a life. And of course, we all know our good friend Gary. Life, life, life. We also have Honor Troll who gives you an extra life every time you gain a life and Jaddy Offshoot with that landfall loving trigger that will give you a life each time a land hits the field. With the last few life loving creatures we have Marauding Blight Priest who says whenever you gain life each opponent loses a life. That sounds just perfect for Dina. We also have Black Commander Staple Zulaport Cutthroat who says whenever it or another creature you control dies each opponent loses one life and you gain a life. And the last creature is fresh from Strixhaven, and that is Wither Bloom Apprentice. With that Magecraft ability that says whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery, each opponent loses a life and you gain a life. You can really start to see the theme here. As touched upon earlier, we are really digging into food tokens, because here we are just super, super hungry. And of course, cracking a food token for free gets you three life, which is just going to add up in a crazy way in this deck. First, we have Feasting Troll King and Gilded Goose. Feasting Troll King can get you a massive three food tokens just for casting, and that honking goose not only creates a token when it hits the field, but also allows you to make more tokens each turn. We also have Gluttonous Troll who ETBs and gives you food tokens depending on how many opponents you have, and Savvy Hunter who creates a food token every time she attacks or blocks. Some big stuff there. Now I wolf this bit as we have Wicked Wolf who fights a creature but also sacks those food tokens to beef it up and we have Wolf's Quarry that creates three boars that when they die, again, create you food tokens. Circle of life. And lastly, in our food feast festivities, we have Giant Skewer that's an equipment that whenever a quick creature deals combat damage, you get to create a food token and Witch's Oven, sack a creature and create a food. If you manage to even crack three food tokens in one go, that's nine life you gain and you're pinging each opponent for three. This deck drains hard. Moving on to our removal, starting with Demon's Disciple and Plague Crafter. When they both ETB, your opponents have to sack a creature. 
Next, we have another green artifact or enchantment removal in Rexage, and we have Viscera Seer to give you the option to sack your creatures and scry one. We also have Feed the Swarm to destroy target creature or enchantment, and Bake into a Pie, because why not just kill something when you can kill something and get a delicious food token at the same time. There's also Beast Within to destroy target permanent, and Death Sprout, which not only destroys a creature, but lets you search out for a nice little land. And for the rest of the removal, we have Golgari Charm to give you a wide variety of options and Putrefy, again, destroying an artifact or creature. Whilst we're still talking removal, we've also got a couple of board wipe options available, with the first being Deadly Tempest, which is perfect for Dina, as not only does it destroy all creatures, but each player loses life equal to the number of creatures they had. Next, we have In Garuk's Wake, which is a pricey card to play out, but if you get it out, then you've got a Warnet-sided board wipe, which is just perfection. And for the third and final board wipe, we've put in Nev's Disc. Have that finger on the trigger option at any time to destroy all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments, which is some spicy, spicy stuff. For the last big bulk at the deck, we're going to look at all the instant sorceries, artifacts, and more that gain you life so you can drain your opponents even more. First we have Blood Tithe that makes each opponent lose 3 life and lets you gain all that sweet life your opponent has lost, which Dina will then trigger and smack your opponent in the face for another life. And we have Cosmos Elixir that allows you some sweet card draw if you have more life than you started with, which in this deck you absolutely should. But hey, if you don't, then have some more life. Next we have Fountain of Renewal for that one life each upkeep and again that card draw option. And Pristine Talisman that gives you a little bit of mana and that delicious one life. The good thing with artifacts like these is initially they're so non-threatening to opponents they're likely to just let them be and keep them on the board and not waste a removal spell on them but in a few turns even if they are gone they really do make their money's worth constantly pinging and triggering Dina. Next we have Profane Memento that gives you life when a creature hits an opponent's graveyard and Tablet of the Guild that allows you to choose two colours and whenever you cast a spell if it's one of those colours you gain a life for each colour absolutely huge in this Golgari deck. Next up is Bastion of Remembrance that gains you and drains your opponent whenever one of your creatures dies and Life Gift which gives you a life every time a land comes into play. Any land, how good is that? We also have a Mole Divine Reclamation that says whenever a creature you control dies you gain life and draw a card and Revenge of Ravens that triggers whenever a creature or a planeswalker attacks you giving you a life and draining that attacking player of a life. Next we have Roots of Life, which on play makes you choose Island or Swamps. Whenever a land of the chosen type gets tapped by an opponent, you gain one life. Breaking the bank for this budget deck, we have Sanguine Bond, that says whenever you gain life, target opponent loses a life. And Trespasser's Curse, that enchants a player and hits them for one whenever they play a creature and gives you a life. If they're playing with that wise token deck, you know they're getting targeted. Finally, we have Blood Tribute that makes target opponent lose half their life, and if you kick it, you gain all that life. And in this deck, there's about half a dozen or so vampires, so the opportunity to kick really is there. We just have Tend the Pests, where you sack a creature and you create X 1 1 pest tokens, where X is the sacked creature's power. And guess what? All those pests give you one life when they die. And lastly, to talk about in this deck, because I love it and it doesn't really fit into any other category and I always want to protect my commander. I've put Swifty Boots in there because again, I want to keep my commander on the field for as long as possible. Lastly, let's run through the lands of which 13 are Swamp and 12 are Forest. We also have Commander Staples like Command Tower and Exotic Orchard for that varying mana. Next up is Golgari Rock Farm and Jungle Hollow because they're cheap to buy and why not throw in a bounce land? Next is Myriad Landscape to sack and get out those two basic lands and Rogue's Passage again because it's cheap to buy and honestly I throw it in every commander deck just to make something unblockable. Mm -mm -mm. Next is Sap Seep Forest which you can tap for a life which again is perfect for Dina and Temple of Malady to help fix your mana and scry one. Lastly we have Witch's Cottage to bring back a creature and Woodland Chasm because cow time. This really is a deck that we found just has so much synergy, and although it may not overwhelm with creatures, the constant barrage of life gain from creatures, instant sorceries, lands, and everywhere else will really drain your opponents quicker than you can say, if I get a thousand subs before August, I'm getting a prickly marmoset tattoo. There we have it, that is the deck tech. 
Thank you for watching and please make sure to smash that like button and subscribe for all things MTG, including a Strixhaven box opening this coming Saturday. For now though, I'm all Dina'd out, so I'll see you in the next video.